The Kugelpanzer was a highly experimental, semi-spherical German tank design that likely dated back to World War II. It weighed approximately 1.8 tons, was about 4.9 feet or 1.5 meters in height, with a length of 5.5 feet or about 1.7 meters, had 5 millimeters of armor surrounding it on all sides, a 25 horsepower two-stroke engine that allowed it to move at around 5 miles per hour, and also featured a small wheel on the back that likely acted as a means for stabilization. A single tank was captured by the Russian army in Manchuria in 1945, after it had been shipped to Japan at some point in the 1940s. Little is known about the Kugelpanzer, including its purpose, who designed it, although it is believed that Krupa built it, why it was made, and even the type of metal in which it was comprised. This said, there is still much conjecture as to what its true purpose was, and to answer that, we must look at the history of the Kugelpanzer and of similar designs. Spherical tank designs go back to World War I and continue to be designed through the interwar period, with such tanks like the Texas Tumbleweed and Trefuswagen tanks being designed. The latter was actually finished in 1917 and was created in order to break the stalemate of trench warfare, as so many tank designs of that period were created to do. It was largely a failure due to the heavy weight of the tank, the high recoil of the cannon, and the poor center of gravity making it so that the Trefuswagen could not cross trenches or even ditches without getting stuck and or possibly flipping over. The Tumbleweed tank was much more similar to the Kugelpanzer and was an American design that never saw fruition. It featured a shell cut into two independently moving hemispheres which could be moved to move the tank forward or in any given direction. It featured numerous machine guns for both infantry support and anti-aircraft capability. Again, however, this was only a thought exercise and was never seriously considered. Other various designs were put forward in the same vein, essentially all being minimally crewed vehicles that took the role of fire support while assisting advancing troops. This all said, the Kugelpanzer, as many historians believe, was likely to serve either in this role protecting the occupant from rifle fire less than that of most light machine guns or in a scouting role. It was likely to be equipped with either an MG-34 or an MG-42 machine gun that sat in a slot underneath the driver's viewing port in order to provide some level of offensive or defensive capability. The likely goal of the designer of the Kugelpanzer was to create a method of scouting that was to be faster than foot travel, would be relatively small, and would also keep the driver safe for most small arms fire. To this point, the age of design, if it was pre-war, early war, or even a late war design, is unknown, and thus makes determining its role much more difficult, as Germany's war needs were vastly different depending on the year or even the month of the war. Most likely, it would have been designed at some point between the pre- and mid-war eras, Due to the fact that it was captured in Manchuria and German U-boat trips to Japan were severely restricted in the later stages of the war, though not entirely stopped, as evidenced by the existence of U-234 and its trips to Japan during the late war period, including carrying around 1,200 pounds of uranium oxide that was actually captured by the U.S. upon the surrender of the sub on May 14, 1945. Ultimately, if the Kugelpanzer had been produced in numbers even totaling just a few dozen, we would have likely seen it adopted for numerous roles, including fighting alongside advancing infantry with its onboard machine gun, reconnaissance, cable laying, or even as an artillery spotter. What makes the Kugelpanzer so intriguing is its near total lack of written history and documents, as well as its unconventional shape and the fact that only one has ever been found. This lack of history allows us to draw conclusions as to what may have been its function. Needless to say, though interesting, the Kugelpanzer functioned as an evolutionary dead end in tank design and was likely conceived for war conditions that were never presented in World War II. That all said, thank you so much for watching my video. Please subscribe if you are interested in further historical videos as I will be producing more historical pieces about unknown parts of World War II. Again, thank you all so much, and I hope you all have a great day.